Welcome to Bermuda, dude. It's Thank a pleasure you. having you here. Now, you are here uh, on island to talk about your work with autism, mm -hmm. and uh, we appreciate having you here. And uh, tell you what, man, as an autism advocate, if you can just share with our audience uh, right now, what are some of the important things for people just to know about autism? Well, the most important thing is that autism is a spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now, my autism is going to be completely different compared to the next person you're going to meet. And in our community, we have, if you met one individual with autism, you met just that one individual with autism. Some individuals are going to be like myself, who are fully verbal, who are giving presentations like uh, we're doing uh, here in uh, Bermuda, and then there are going to be other people who are going to be more severely impacted by autism who might need lifetime care. So that's one of the biggest things. And the other thing is, is that autism is truly characterized as a social and communication disorder, but the thing is, it is a spectrum, and I really wish more people understood that. So for families that are just like starting out on their journey, and I know like uh, as I work with people, for some, it's like the world just, it does shift. Mm -hmm. But what would you say, you know, within the, after the tears fall, after yeah. the diagnosis yeah. is delivered, what would you say the kinds of things that, you know, you want families to hear to uh, get working at this? What would you say to them? Well, the biggest thing is to get going right away. Mm -hmm. I, I know so many families who get a diagnosis from one doctor or pediatrician mm -hmm. and then the next thing I hear is like oh we should get a second opinion mm -hmm. or oh we don't believe the opinion of the doctor but he's a late bloomer she's a late bloomer mm -hmm. and maybe we should wait this out to see if there's any mm -hmm. improvement before we actually go about trying to get things done and mm -hmm. that's the worst thing you can do mm -hmm. I see so many parents who get into the dial and mm -hmm. don't get me wrong it's one of the tough like one of the toughest experiences that any family will have to deal with in their life because of the deer in headlights. Mm -hmm. It's like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to go about this process? Mm -hmm. So I think the most important thing is to take a deep breath, yeah. do your research, find the best people who can be part of your child's village, mm -hmm. and then just get to work. All right, so you spent some time within the, the school system and you have the opportunity to consult with teachers and administrators. And uh, what would you say the embrace actually needs to be in schools for our children? What kinds of things need to be there for them? Well, w one thing that we get a lot is based on deficit model mm -hmm. training. So a lot of the times it feels like, and this is not all educators, but some educators where they see like, I need to spend 99% of my time focused on these kids' weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But what about their strengths? What about, what, what about their talents? What about things that they love to do, that they're mm -hmm. great at? Mm -hmm. If we're only spending 1% of that time focused on those interests, mm -hmm. I mean, wh what, what life is that kid going to grow up to have? What is their journey going to look like mm -hmm. if their entire life is practically a nine to five job where they have to go through different therapies, always focus on their weaknesses, mm -hmm when you know, we, we don't find out what they're talented at, what their interests are. So I think the most important thing is that we establish a relationship, we establish a rapport with these kids, and we make sure our educators understand that we need to teach the way that these kids learn. And all disability, it, it won't be one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So think outside the box. Well, absolutely, I appreciate hearing that. Now, the other thing, of course, when they're in school, one of the tough things that we see for a lot of families is just a social embrace. Yeah. The kids present a little bit socially awkward, and we're working on just getting the world to understand that everybody has nuances and tolerances, but, you know, how did you just, how did you meander through this social world? Like, you had to get here, you had to go to the airport, you have to deal with yeah. people, all the, like, let's talk about that social aspect of autism. Sure. So, I mean, it is very jarring. It can be very, very jarring at times. It's like you're, you're, so, you're so focused on so many different things all at once. For, for, for even like going to the airport, you're, you have TSA. It's like you have someone saying hi to you. <laughs> it's like there's yeah. so much uh, that you have to process all at one time. And for people with autism, who a lot of them have hypersensitivity where like e even trying to focus on just eye contact mm -hmm. can be difficult. Mm -hmm. then, then you have to focus on things like having a conversation and doing positive body language and mm -hmm. doing things such as like making sure your face, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, face mannerisms mm -hmm. and the tone of your voice, it's, it, it's a spectrum in itself. Absolutely. So I think it's important 
that, I mean, me myself, I've had to co figure out coping mechanisms while I grew up, like things such as cognitive behavioral therapy helped me kind of be able to process one thing at a time, but also schedules. Mm -hmm. Before I go on any speaking events, I literally try to picture myself in every single situation I'm gonna be in, if it's in the airport, whether it's trying to get a cab, whether it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I literally plan this out in my head. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of prepared for it before I go into that situation. Excellent. One of the toughest questions, not necessarily a tough question, but one of the questions I had to feel recently was like, could a child on the autism spectrum actually be naughty? And uh, hmm. the goal, like, what is the function of behavior, you know? Uh, and at the same time, when we look at the function of behavior, it is to get a variety of things. It's to get reward. Uh, it's to avoid. So behavior for me always speaks. And so I know, like, as I work with children, uh, if they want to, if they're motivated to get something, then they will act or behave in such a manner because, okay, when I do this, I always get the cookies. When mm -hmm. I do this, I always get the toys. And if I keep on persisting, it always happens. And so, like, what would your, what would your statement be? What would your synopsis would be if someone asked you, Carrie, can children on the autism spectrum just actually be naughty and be and require levels of redirection or discipline? How, how would you? I think we have to understand that people with autism are people first. Mm -hmm. And just like any person without a disability could be naughty, mm -hmm. so goes for people with disabilities. Now, one of the biggest comparisons I give in the autism community is that a lot of the times when you see someone in a public place and if a kid with autism is having a meltdown, mm -hmm. a lot of people in the outside world call it a tantrum. Mm -hmm. They call that kid being a brat. They mm -hmm. call that kid being annoying. Mm -hmm. And you really don't know what's going on in that individual. Mm -hmm. So don't go in with any perceived notions. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to just look at the world with a light, just understanding that you know mm -hmm. you don't know everything that's going on through that person's life. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to people being naughty, mm -hmm. sure, they might be being naughty, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. do you really know mm -hmm. that that's going on? Well, I like that because you yeah. know one of the things I've discovered in practice is that you know, when it, there is a meltdown, it's like, I am so overwhelmed, I actually do not know what to do. And I've seen tantrums disappear when, okay, well, we can see the motivation is that. So mm -hmm. I slide the iPad over and instantaneously, life is good, Disney World <laughs> is here. So like, you know what, so here we see this. This is a full-blown tantrum. I do not want to do this, but immediately, and so a meltdown would be like, I am just stuck with this, I cannot figure this out. And it does take that particular, um, you know, it, it's, it is, sometimes for some people exhaustive trying to figure it out, but you know, you're right. We, we have to just try to figure out what's the function of that behavior. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're here on the island, what do you think about Bermuda, man? You've been here for man, a minute or two. I love it. It's uh, you know, it's just everything about the people. I mean, obviously you <laughs> too. Uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, like everyone's like family. Everyone's super, super chill and just, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I feel like I could get along with so many people on the island compared to, compared to most places I travel to. It's very hit and miss, mm -hmm. but within like the first five minutes of actually getting off the plane, getting into the taxi, meeting you, mm -hmm. I, it, everyone is just uh, greeted us with open arms and okay. that's kind of, awesome so a me. thumbs up experience yeah. there now you've been Absolutely. to what we're on the third school so you've been to we went to Bermuda Institute we went to Clearwater and today we went to, to Whitney how are you finding the, the children as they engage and talk to you how do you how are you finding that experience it, it's very enlightening uh, some of the questions that have come up uh, are, are questions I've actually never had before during any uh, q and I, I Clearwater, for example, uh, a question about just like what I like to do for fun. That's a question that's never come <laughs> up in any of my, and it's like, you know, just the nicest question yeah. in the world. It's not anything like, oh, what do you think about the DSM-5 or what do you think right. about the spectrum? It's, yeah. It was just really, really cool to mm -hmm. kind of just see these kids just wanting to get up to know me more mm -hmm. versus like Carrie, the autism expert, mm -hmm. them just wanting to get to know Carrie. And I feel like I've, I've seen that almost consistently in all the schools I've attended and you know that's that's really great it it, it shows that uh, these kids have great personal skills mm -hmm. 
And uh, as they grow up and get a little bit older, that's going to do so much for them. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate one major message that you've lived, in, that you've left here, and that's for the children to be kind. You know, so I do know that uh, you're, we're just here for a moment in time, but we're going to follow your career. And man, it's really a blessing to have you here. Of course, I'm All glad right. to be here. Thanks so much. All right, cheers.